Thank you very much for joining me. This is Mario Gun Live, and it's good to have you tonight. Thank you very much for joining me. As I said, uh, this is Mario Gun Live again. And if you are joining me from wherever you're watching from, uh, I will say welcome to Mario Gun's diary today. It's getting better, isn't it? It's going to get so better. Like it's going to be so, so beautiful. And thank you to all of you who have actually reached out, uh, supporting, uh, sharing the page, inviting people to come and listen to this undiluted, honest, and sincere platform. And this is your own one man, Mayegun Genera. So to all of you who are going to be seeing me for the first time, I'll say thank you for joining me. I decided to do this today because it is important that we do this. And uh, I don't know if uh, the caption is currently showing. For some reason, I need to check that out, uh, especially on uh, on uh, YouTube. I think uh, we're having an issue with that uh, for some reason. But let's check that out the YouTube. Thank you very much. So for some reason, we seems to be very all right uh, on. We seems to be very all right on uh, on YouTube. Or on Facebook, the caption is not showing up on Facebook. So I'm just going to let us uh, use the, you know, the one that is streaming on the screen as uh, your own uh, caption. But you know, I'll get you along. I'll get you into it, and you will get to understand what we are talking about. So share the broadcast. Invite your friends. Invite everybody. Invite the bad bellers. Tell them that my ego is live. Let me check the volume. Yeah, I think uh, we are having an issue with the volume for some reason. Uh, I think we are having an issue with that. Let me double check. For some reason, 
Oh, I think uh, we are fine with the audio. So thank you very much for joining me. This is Mayegun live. And the uh, conversation for tonight is this. For those of you who might have uh, probably not seen it on uh, Facebook, uh, this is the caption. It is our talk tonight. And I want to talk about the land uh, grabbers. I want to talk about uh, the land sellers in Yoruba land. Some of you are educated, but you are displaying stark illiteracy. You are displaying stark ignorance on social media. And I know why. It is politics. Politics makes many of you become so foolish and stupid in your own ignorance. But you will not, you will not continue to disgrace us. You will not continue to shift blame. You will not continue to deny the obvious. I am a Yoruba man. I made a post. I, moved, I made a post. I think it was yesterday. I was just thinking about this whole thing. Then a video popped up. Guys sent me some videos and they said, Mayogu, have you seen this video? And I was like, it's typical. Right? I don't need a video to know how an average Yoruba man want to deny obvious. But today, you are listening. I mean, you are listening to your brother. You are listening to your peer. You are listening to someone, a do a son, who is concerned. And just see whatever I'm going to tell you today from the point of concern, whether you are in the authority, whether you are benefiting from the authority in a way, whether you have the position in any way to influence things in public. I am doing this because of you. And I'm doing this because of those whose ignorance are actually the reason why it will be difficult, very difficult, to advise an average Yoruba man that Nigeria is not for him. But I'll break it down. When we talk about uh, identity, when we talk about uh, what makes you uh, who you are, I am a Yoruba man. I grew up in Ijebu, so which means I grew up from the very, very close part of my own existence as a Yoruba man. So I grew up with everything that made me an Ijebu man. And I knew what a land or what land mean to an average Yoruba man. And what it means to this generation of land grabbers, land owners, land sellers, fake, illegal, you know, criminals who are committing crime, huge crime, economic crime against the land that they should be protecting. And I'll tell you why. Everywhere you go in the world, land is so valuable and it's transferable. It means that uh, from one man to another, or let's say from one generation to another, landed property has always been a significant part of the heritage of every individual. That's why they say, in our land, on our land, you cannot do this on our land because land seems to be what? attach you to a place and if you have been there for so long you will value it so you are expected to value the land and if you are smart enough you will not sell the land only for you to go and buy cars you will not sell the land only to go and marry another wife you will not sell the land only for you to become the talk of the town at different parties now when you do that what you are doing is that you are selling off your heritage. Then when you turn around and realize that, it seems that you have sold everything. Yes, when you sell, there are buyers. And when people buy things, they own it. Do you see the difference? So this is where I'm going to come in tonight. I am a Yoruba man. And I witnessed this part of, this part of uh, greed that has enveloped us as a people. We love to blame just everyone else but ourselves in most of the things we did to ourselves. And I'm going to break it down. It's going to be about an hour broadcast tonight. And I want, to, I want you to take your time and listen to the detail of this presentation. As a Yoruba man, I grew up seeing people selling their land to their fellow brothers or to people they believe wanted to utilize the land to further 
help the community either going into farming or probably selling for those who want to build houses or selling to those who want to build businesses. I grew up knowing that. But as times there went by, or let me say as times there gone by or so, something happened and it changed. I also witnessed when people began selling their landed properties simply because it was the thing of the moment at the time. In my own hometown, Odo Ogbolu, in Ijebu, in Odo Ogbolu local government of Ogun State. And the disguise of we were selling to those who wanted to come and invest, I saw people who sold their inheritance who sold their landed property. They sold my family property. They sold my family landed property. When my great-grandmother was alive, when my grandfather was alive, the people who raised me, I remember that they would take me to different places and say, this land belonged to us. This is this and this is that. I grew up, I grew up, saw people sold the land. And it's part of one of the things I believe that one day, one day, yes, one day, I will be able to be in the position to actually reclaim that back and use them for the benefit of the people of the land in Odo Bolu. That is my hometown. And I witnessed that. I don't need anybody to tell me about land grabbers in Yoruba land. And I decided to start from my own land, from my own town, where today 70% of the land in the town are no longer in the hands of the owners of the town. And that is the truth. They sold them so cheaply that there were those who were selling a plot of land for 15,000 Naira because the land was so big, were so large. It was easier for them to make a lot of money by selling everything cheaply. This were from my own hometown. Some of you became uh, supporters, defenders, Lovers of so many popular uh, Fuji artists, uh, clients, those who support, who spray money on uh, Fuji artists in Yoruba land. I grew up seeing that too. In fact, there are so many people who became land grabbers simply because it was the easiest way and easiest access to wealth. So many, many of them turned out to become land grabbers in Yoruba land. And to cover up, they joined politics too. You know what I mean? In Nigeria, if you want to get involved in any crime and you want to legalize that crime, just join any political party that is in power. You will be covered. Your crime will be covered. And they will turn you to a legal land seller even, if even, if, even though they know that you are a land grabber. You kill people. You sell land, one single plot of land, to five people. These are common stories. These were Yorubas. Then I grew up seeing people who couldn't sell, sell their properties again. My father's property is in Ketu, in Lagos. My dad has a building, a two-story building in Ketu. I never slept there. Probably, I don't think I slept there for up to a week in my life, in my entire life. And it's because I grew up in Odo Ogbolu. I grew up in Ijebu. And that is what formed me and shaped me to who I am today. And I'm very grateful for that because it's, it was a stage in my life that actually made me who I am. To now understand the fact that whatever is not yours, if it's keeping it, I mean, if, it, if it's uh, kept in your care, all you hold the owner is to carefully care for that thing, including landed properties, properties like houses. But I grew up seeing people selling their fathers, their late parents' properties to those they are now calling foreigners in Yoruba land. I grew up seeing them. They flaunted and they floundered and plundered those money. They become so rich suddenly. They wasted those resources. Those properties, including landed properties, became properties of those they now call foreigners. How can they be foreigners when you sold your inheritance? Do you think unleashing hatred, unleashing hate, spreading hatred, 
using political disguise will win you back all those things you sold? Do you actually think that's how it works? Do you think when you start something like uh, the usual xenophobic attack, or if you start your tribal division using politics to destroy and kill people so that you can gain back what you sold, what you sold for a, for a bottle of beer? I grew up knowing that. I grew up knowing that. If you are a Yoruba man and you want to be honest to yourself right now, watching me right now, I'm still coming to the part of politics. I am telling you the ground cause of what you want to today turn to tribal nonsense. You sold your inheritance. You watch your peers. You watch your brothers and sisters. They sold what their parents worked for. They sold what their parents handed over to them. They sold everything just because they wanted to look rich. They wanted to appear rich. They didn't invest the money. Many of them built properties for them, for themselves, big palaces that they could not even maintain or manage. They bought themselves expensive automobiles, expensive cars. They lavished expensive parties. They became so popular because they were selling their own inheritance, Yoruba land. They were selling the lands in Yoruba land. They were Yorubas. They were not Igbos. They were not Aousas. They were not Fulanese. Think about that. Then, when it became so, so, uh, like, so lucrative for these, our Yoruba brothers and sisters, the Omoniles, Yorubas, Yorubas who speak Yoruba, are victims of Yoruba land grabbers. How can you then, as a Yoruba man, as a Yoruba woman, who want to be honest to yourself right now, listening to me right now, how can you then turn around, turn around and say, some people want to steal your land. Some everywhere they go, they want to take over everywhere. Meanwhile, when you are selling those things, we were not reinvesting. We were lavishing. And they are still lavishing. Many, many of you are victims. You have been victims of land grabbers in Yoruba land. Your brothers, your sisters, they sold one land. To 10 of you, they have killed many of you while you are trying to gain back what you paid for. Then how can you then turn around and say someone is trying to take over Yoruba land from you? How? That is where I had that concern. Because if I want to, if I want to fight for anything, listen, I would love to have a, a, a sort of a concrete evidence in a way that you will find it difficult difficult to disagree with me when i say but this is wrong now i have told you now i have presented you this i'm still continuing this is just a start we are not uh, yet there we watch them do this right and we watch them unleash mayhem violence people were killed people are being killed people are being defrauded you know that abby those who are doing that, I have never heard of any Emeka. I have never heard of uh, Ikeshuku. I have never heard of any Ngozi. I have never heard of any Nena selling land in any part of Yoruba land. Lagos State, for example, we have seen where your brother will tell you that I want to sell this land. I want to sell this land for 20 million naira. And that same brother of yours that speaks Yoruba like you, we turn around and tell you that 20 million era land is no longer 20 million because someone is ready to pay 40 million. Then you turn around, you say, and he is ready to take the money. He wants to take it. He is now asking you that, except you are ready to pay that 40 million or 45 million, he is not going to sell it to you. Is going to sell it to someone else. Then you turn around. Then you see Uche, who wants to pay 40 million. You don't know, maybe because Uche says he wants to buy the land, your brother told Uche that I can only sell the land for 50 million. And Uche says he's going to buy it for 40 million. Or your brother turn around and he's now telling you he's no longer selling to you. And the next person you will blame is that Uche, who also needs a land. 
for an investment just like you. But your brother choose someone who will, who will pay more. And this is, the, this is the game. You know that is the game. Abby, you know that is it, Abby. You have seen your brothers who suddenly, who knows that this mechanic village back in 40, back 40 years ago, they gave it to a group of people. And that group of people, they are the owner. Many, many of them were gone and now dead. But as, a, as the current owner, some people have played prank on you. They have changed the document, sold the land. They didn't tell you about it. Collect the money. One day you wake up. You come to your workshop. And hey, there is a signboard that says you must move. Hey, who bought the land? Uh, one Alaji Aruno. One Alaji Aruno from Kano. How could Alaji Aruno buy? Hey, they want to take over our land. Where is your brother who sold him land? The same thing is happening in government. You have people in government whose only role, only responsibility is to protect what the value in the land, what attaches you to the land, your land, your language, your security, your prosperity, your protection in your own country. These are the things that makes you valuable. These are the things that attaches you to your land. But what are your government doing? The Yorubas. They are in government. They make laws for you. They make laws on land in Yoruba land. Those who make laws on who sells and buy land in Yoruba land, they are not Igbos. They are not Aousas. They are not Fulanese. They are Yorubas. They speak the same language like me and you. How can I then turn around and say, an Aousa man want to take over my land, an Igbo man want to take over my land, when I am seeing my brothers and sisters Selling the lands, advertising the land cheaply to give them away for no just other reason, just for them to feel good, just for them to live big, just for them to live the luxurious life that they cannot afford. Who do you blame? The buyer or the seller? I am coming. There is another part. And before we get to that, let me take, uh, uh, what do you call it? Let me take this uh, quick. Uh, a short break. A minute. <laughs> 